Welcome to Jesus Christ for Muslims. Today I'd like to talk about persecution and especially persecution of my brothers and sisters Christians. I don't know whether you've ever experienced persecution, but it really is a dreadful thing. You're going about your daily life and suddenly people who you probably know or people who live amongst your community suddenly start to attack you. Suddenly, maybe you're burnt out of your home, maybe you're arrested, maybe you're thrown in prison, maybe you're even tortured, your loved ones killed, your daughter's raped, um, maybe you're on the run, you've lost everything. It's a very tough thing to be persecuted. But we need to understand that it happens, it happens around the world. And we need to ask ourselves, why does it happen? Why are so many Christians persecuted in so many different countries? I think we first have to ask ourselves, well, why the Christians? Why is it that Christians are hated. Jesus said something very interesting. He said, just as they hated me, they will hate you. So in order to understand persecution of Christians, we need to understand why was Christ himself persecuted, indeed persecuted to death, death on a cross. When you read the transcript that we have of the trial of Christ, various witnesses were called. Witness said this about Jesus, that about Jesus. They all conflicted with each other and the trial was going nowhere. And then the high priest addressed Jesus directly and said, are you the son of God? And Jesus replied by quoting the prophet Daniel where there is a vision in the prophet Daniel of God himself. And Jesus quotes Daniel and says, you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. And by his quoting that, Jesus is clearly saying that he is indeed the Son of God. And in fact, he says, I am. And so the high priest tears his clothes in rage and says to the Sanhedrin, we have no need to call any other witnesses for this man is condemned out of his own mouth. If you think about the nature of that condemnation, they were saying of Jesus, how dare you be who you say you are? How dare you have that identity? How dare you be or claim to be the Son of God? Today, many people around the world say the same about Christians. They say, how dare you be a believer in Jesus Christ? How dare you have the identity of being a Christian? Why can't you be like us, whoever us happens to be? Why can't you be Muslim or Hindu or atheist or Buddhist or believe in our tribal gods? How dare you be a Christian? So it comes down to a question of identity and people are passionate about identity. They don't really object to Christians love but they do object sometimes to the fact that Christians have a very clear idea about what is right and what is wrong. And that idea is based on, a, on something that the Bible teaches with that everybody has value. That it isn't the fact that there's us and that there's them. But you know, before the throne of God, there is just us. So when some people want to have a, a battle, want to have a war with them, 
whoever they happen to be. The Christians say, well, we're all one. We're all the same. We're all humans. And people object to that. People object to that uh, idea that everybody matters. People object to the fact that they sign up, Christians sign up to what God has said about humanity. So, I think persecution happens primarily because people don't want Christians to be Christian. It's that simple. But you know, Christians will go on being Christian because actually, I believe the Christians are right. The Christians are pointing us to the future that really we all want to have, which is a future where people live in peace. But why does persecution happen particularly in some countries and not in others? And here we come to an important point about law. Persecution happens particularly in countries where there is one law for one group of people and another law for another. Um, we know of countries where if you are belonging to the state religion, you enjoy the privilege of protection under the law. And if you don't belong to the state religion, that protection is removed. Indeed, if members of that, citizens of that country persecute Christians, often the, the state police or the army will assist them in that persecution. Now that is, by any reckoning, a shocking state of affairs. And it seems to me that any country which does not have one law for everybody has ceased to be a country in the proper meaning of the word. It has now become two countries. One country for one group, another country for another and is engaged in a process of conquest of this second country. And that is treachery. That is a betrayal of the minorities. That is a betrayal of the people who are somehow different from the rest. There has to be one law with the same set of rules that apply to everybody equally not person A getting preferential treatment before the law compared to person B, not person A being allowed to testify and person B not being allowed to testify. That is quite wrong. So I want to encourage people listening to this who are being persecuted, Christians who are being persecuted for their identity, I want to encourage you because you are following in the footsteps of Christ. Just as Christ showed his love for all of us by being prepared to be persecuted and enduring it, he also promised that if we truly are in the kingdom of God, then we too would also be persecuted. Um, and Jesus says you are blessed because you're being persecuted. And you may not feel blessed. You may feel very much the opposite. But rather than look at your current circumstances, I invite you to look at your situation from the standpoint of heaven. Your sufferings today will result in a crown of righteousness, great honor for eternity. And today, I salute you. I salute you for your courage. I salute you for your fortitude. I salute you for your patience. And I salute you for your love. And I pray that the whole church will stand up and stand with you and help you in any way it can. We have a long way to go for that to be a reality. 
but pray with me that one day we will see the whole church standing as one and saying to the world, no more persecution. And I want to say to the persecutors, consider what you are doing. Ask yourself this, is it helping your cause or is it hindering your cause? Does it result in people thinking well of you? Or do people think badly of you because what you are doing is bad? Do not think for a moment that your actions terrify people around you. They don't. We are made of sterner stuff. Makes us angry, sure. But above all, it makes us determined. You too need to know the love of Christ. You too need to come to an understanding of just law. I say to the rulers of countries, if you want to have a good law, read the Old Testament, read the law of the nation of Israel. It's very simple. There are only 613 laws. Some are to do with identity. The rest are to do with how to live right. But the important thing is there was one law and there was equal treatment under the law. That should be true for every country on earth. And I say to you, if that is not the state in, in your country, if it's not the state of the law in your country, then you do well to do something about it before it's too late. God bless you all.